Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and, and I'm going to take you through a some advanced SQL queries today. And we're going to have a little bit of fun with this one. I'm going to use my food database, and I'm going to kind of show you a couple queries that look the same, and we're going to move forward towards advanced. So let's look at this query I have right here. Very simple. Select top 10 for display name and grains. We're going to rank by the grain value. Grains in the food database, you have the value of how many grains and vegetables and calories and whatever you have in the, in the table by for specific foods. And I'm just going to show the results of this query here. And what you do is you get it, you have that the top 10 that you've got, um, soft pretzels have a lot of grains, cheese pizza, meat pizza, soft pretzels, okay, and you can see the grain rank 1 through 10. Well, that's great, fine and dandy, but what I want to do is I want to be able to now start combining different things with my aggregations, like the rank is an aggregation query, and I'd like to look at how I can combine aggregations. So let's go one step further, and I'm going to take this query one little bit bigger here. I'm going to make a little bit more room so you can see it. I've added this clause called the with clause, and what I've done is I've defined an object called grain, which has three fields, display name, grains, and grain rank, and they're going to be the display name, grains, and over here, grain rank, using the rank aggregation to get the rank from foods. So this width creates an object that looks like a table called grain. And it can be used like a table in a subsequent query. So now let's, let's pretend we've got this grain table, and now we want to put it together in a query. So in this case, I'm going to select the top 10. I'm going to select the, food na the display name the grains and the grain rank again. Same thing I did before from foods and grain. Okay, I'm gonna, I have to join them, so I'm going to join them on display name and the value of grains. That way I can get a good join here. And I'm going to order by the grains descending. And if I do that, you're going to see that I get exactly the same results, only it's going to take a lot longer to actually calculate those results. But if you think about what I just did there, <clears throat> all I did, even though I've got this rank, all I'm really doing is showing you the grains again by rank. Okay, that was what the order by grains descending does in that clause. Well, you're looking at going, you know what, that query isn't any better than the other query, except that I'm introducing this ability to create this with a table that you created as part of the query, which gives us a lot of power here. So let's say we want to go one step further. Let's use a different aggregation. Instead of using the rank aggregation, let's use the entile aggregation. And the entile aggregation uh, basically creates a column where they're um, broke, up, broke up into how many entiles you want. Like if you say entile of four, it'll create quartiles. Top ones will have a value of one. The next group will have a value of two. The next group a value of three. And the next group a value of four. Well. If I, if I put this query together like this one, where I actually now make grain actually have the grain quartile, and I use the end tile 4 here, so I break it up into 4. Now, I'm going to do essentially the same query, query that I did before. I'm going to take the top 10 foods. I'm going to show the display name, the grains, and the rank. I'm going to take it from foods and grain. And this time, I'm going to actually combine them on display name and, and grains. This is just a join condition here. Okay, but now I've added another and statement where I say grain quartile equals 1. Now, that's the top quartile of the grains. So if you think about it, you should kind of be able to figure out exactly what I'm going to get back in this case. I set it up so all the top ones are in quartile 1, and I'm doing the same exact query I did before, only I'm specifying another condition of grain quartile equals 1. So if you think about it, I should pretty much get, I should get exactly the same thing that I did before, which guess what? I got exactly the same thing I got before. Now, you're thinking, well, great, you just did a much more complex way of doing the same query you did the very first time just by using the rank. Well, now I can do something totally different. I can look and see what are the top foods in the second quartile, not just in the first quartile. So now I can look and say, well, Outside of the, uh, of the first quartile, I've got the second quartile, and look, I have a new group. I've got frosted flakes and fried rice and reduced fat cheese crackers. Well, that gives you some serious power in your querying. Think about what really gives you the power in the query, though. The with statement allows you to create an object that is a table-like object using a query parameter within the with parentheses that can then be used in the subsequent select statement 
as it exists as a real table. So it creates this temporary structure and allows you to use it. Well, in the case that I showed you, I only created one. But look what I can do with the width. I'm going to go one step further. Now I'm going to create a grain and a meat quartile. So what I really want to see are what are the foods that are in the top grain quartile and the top meat quartile, okay, together both of them. I can do that. And the way I do it is I create two objects using the width. The syntax is pretty straightforward with grain, with the three fields that you have there, which are the three fields you have from the select statement, then a comma after the parentheses, and then the second width object, which is going to be the meat, which is going to have a display name, meats and meat quartile. Okay, and it's going to be this time select the display name in the meat. So in the meats is the value of the amount of meats you have in there. And then I'm going to end tile that into four end tiles. Okay, so now the query is going to look essentially the same. I removed the join condition of matching the grain value and the meat value. I'm just going to join it on the display name. But um, so that's that this part right here will look like a join that you see on just those two. Because I'm joining two tables that are temporary tables with it, and otherwise the query got too long to display on one page. But now look what I can do. I can say, well, let's look at this for what's got the grain, the value of the grains in the first quartile and the meats in the first quartile. What actually comes up when you do that? And let's see what kind of foods have a lot of grains and a lot of meats. And I'll get the top 10 this time. So now if I execute this query, Okay, I've got some interesting ones like fried fish with tartar sauce, and you notice it comes up multiple times. Well, the reason is it is multiple times in the database. I've actually got multiple fried fish with tartar sauces in there. I can go ahead and refine my query down a lot more. I could actually specify the join condition a little bit tighter. Okay, but as you can see, and I, in this case, I ordered by the food dot, foods dot grains, and I could also order by the foods dot meats if I wanted to, and show the results for that. But let's really just kind of get into, um, and boy, breaded fried steak, got a lot of grains, got a meats there. Um, okay, but you can see, now I've got some really interesting stuff here. Um, this ability to, within a single query, define a temporary object that is a table-like object, join it like it exists, as if it existed as a real object, and form a query around using that. So hopefully you can see the power of this with operator. Now it's in SQL Server 2008. It's also in, in uh, Oracle. So you have the capability of using this in both languages. And it's a very, very powerful extension to the SQL language and gives you some capability of doing things that you could still have done by creating a temporary table, creating extra columns and rows, and putting all that together. But now you can do that within a single query. So hopefully this is useful to you and can give you some capability of things that you can do with SQL as you can hopefully you're seeing a lot of the power that's within the SQL language. Good programming and hopefully you caught everything that I did there. Nice advanced querying. Thank you.